Just how close are the ties that bind China and the administration of former President Rodrigo Duterte? A new book connects the dots and offers some answers, and it's called Unrequited Love, Duterte's China Embrace, and it is authored by journalists Marites Vitug and Camille Elemia. The book captures a time in the country's history when Manila and Beijing ties were at their closest despite a row over the West Philippine Sea. It is a story of Duterte's pivot to China, the factors that influenced him, and the results of his policy shift. And perhaps most interesting of it all, it traces the roots of Duterte's affection for China. And here to tell us more about their new book are the authors themselves. Thank you so much for being with us tonight, uh, Camille Lemnia and Ms. Marites Vito. Congratulations on the new book. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it was described there as uh, Duterte's <laughs> affection for China. Does it really run deep? And what led you to focus on this topic? Well, why the topic? Because it was so such a compelling story. Uh, in recent history, he's the only Philippine president to completely side with China. At least during Gloria Macapagal Arroyo's time, she was trying to balance. She was hedging between, yeah, between the U.S. The US and, China. and China. And, you know, presidents always try to do both, to balance. But in the case of Duterte, I mean, October 2016, when he made his first state visit to China, really... Um, shocked a number of many people even some in his cabinet when he said that he was going to separate the philip himself mm. from mm. the rest of the world and just go with china so mm. i think that's a story that mm. was compelling enough to do into a book so it was totally her idea and then because we worked together in rappler and then because we know i think Initially, the backstory was that I was supposed to help with the research, but then I was so honored when she offered <laughs> yeah. me to be a co-author of Marites Vitog. So. Right. Mm. Yeah. I understand the first of the, the fangirling part. But, okay, let's trace it. So we all know right now, anyone who is on Facebook knows that connections between China and the Dutertes are just bandied about, right? But back then... It was a uh, yun nga, medyo weird siya, medyo totoo ba to, parang biglang cambio, and super hard yung cambio niya, di ba? What did you discover was the root of this unrequited love? Yes, Camille uh, went to do research in Davao, and I, yeah. to, so to we, look at the milieu, so she okay. can talk about yeah, it. Yeah, so I went to Davao and talked to Filipino, Chi Chinese Filipino businessmen there. Some of them, um, third generation, second generation, mm -hmm. and they basically helped me trace the story of Duterte's love for China, which somehow extended, or l l of course, the Filipino Chinese community, they helped Duterte in terms of like providing jobs, mm -hmm. because Duterte was really keen on just peace and order. So for Duterte, okay, do whatever you want there, the Chinese community, then I'll just focus on um, peace and order. And then later on, the Chinese Filipino community noticed the influx of Chinese from the from mainland China. And then they also shared with me some of their um, re dynamics, relations there. Like So they would tell me how the, Chi the mainland Chinese, like including Michael Yang, mm -hmm. the infamous Michael yes. Yang, would really be would really go out of his way early on to try to be on the good to be on the good side of the Duterte. So but that's, that's how Michael this Yang, right? He is one businessman who is like not third generation, okay, bagong salta, as we mm -hmm. call it, fresh off the boat. Um, how does Michael Yang become a stand-in for an entire country? But, yeah, sige, go ahead. Duterte himself said many times that he actually asked Michael Yang to lay the groundwork of his pivot to China. And coming from, like, looking back at their ties, like, it started 1990s, so early on like early 2000s there were already sister city deals at that time it wasn't really much of a big deal but later on uh, later part of the the whole um the western nations were kind of trying to criticize these West, uh, sister city deals of china because they, that's their way to go straight to these communities without getting into the to the national government processes and all that so michael yang um with the help of the other um, Ch Filipino Chinese communities, they would um, invite more mainlanders and they would serve as agents. That's how he initially made his money. Mm. So, for example, uh, oh, go to Davao, I can help you create businesses there and all that. And then, allegedly, according to Arturo Lascanas, one of the former Davao Death Squad members, um, he said that Michael, Yang eventually, Michael Yang's businesses eventually extended to um, allegedly drug trafficking mm. and all that. Mm. So, from legit to kind of like underworld mm -hmm. businesses. Yeah. So. Former President Duterte must have felt like he could replicate that model nationwide. 
Is in, that it? In fact, he wanted, when he was president, he wanted uh, a loan to borrow from money from China to, to replicate what they did in Davao, to fight crime. Yes. Mm -hmm. And this was uh, called the, what was it called again? Um, the Safe City Safe, Safe Cities Philippines. Project. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to replicate this in like 18 LGUs. And he said mm -hmm. it's a model in, uh, to fight crime. And mm -hmm. the loan was supposed to provide the Philippines money to buy Huawei technology, uh, surveillance technology, facial recognition technology. Uh, well, we're just glad that the loan didn't push through, but it almost did. Mm -hmm. uh, we already, there were already arrangements mm -hmm. ag uh, about to make an agreement, but it just fell off. Mm -hmm. The Americans yeah. must have tried to woo uh, former President Duterte as well. I mean, it, it, it's, it seems kind of, I mean, uh, on the surface to say that it's, it's just that. Is it rooted in his political belief? Is it something mm -hmm. like that? O talagang sobrang lalim lang talaga nung pinagsamahan? No, I, the, the milieu, as Camille mm -hmm. explained, dun siya lumaki, yun yung environment niya. Mm -hmm. And then when he went to university, he, he kept saying that he was a student of Jose Maria Sison, mm -hmm. and he was influenced mm -hmm. by the founder of the Communist Party. Mm -hmm. And then he, I think meron din siyang pretense na he was leaning towards the left. Mm -hmm. uh, remember when he became president, he took in left like four Mem cabinet members yes, from the but left. eventually they, Didn't they last. it soured, the relationship mm -hmm. and, soured. And then there was one thing that really changed Duterte, like really bolstered his anger towards the U.S. It happened, it was called the marrying incident. It mm -hmm. was in 2003, if I remember it correctly. So there was this allegedly CIA agent who used to always stay in a hotel in downtown Davao. Then he, he acts, supposedly accidentally blew himself up. So everyone was thinking oh it's okay we'll bring him to the hospital and the police will interview him afterwards and then the u.s suddenly spirited him away and like um he was brought to the u.s and do you mean like he literally blew himself up literal yes to. so and then there was there were talks that he was a cia agent and then the u.s supposedly promised that it will be investigated but duterte didn't get any results of that so that somehow bolstered his anger. Mm. I thought you were going to say because Bato was not given a visa. That was, there was also, <laughs> that, 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 that was that later, later on. Later. Was later <laughs> on. I, I there think, was also a yeah. thing with Duterte because he got rejected like with a U.S. visa. And a friend of his told us that he actually missed the birth of his youngest daughter. Mm. You mean Kitty? Yes. Kitty Duterte was yes. born in the U.S.? In the US. Oh. He wasn't, the, okay. he wasn't granted the visa. We haven't oh, wow. checked. It's not, that's not in the book uh -huh. because we haven't checked that. Okay. Mm. But yeah. supposedly, yes, but that's and, the story. It's the, he, he didn't get the importance that China was, mm. his friends mm. from China were, were according him. He didn't get this from the U.S. In fact, he's really very comfortable with his Chinese friends. Mm. And when he was president, he even joked that when he gets invited to meetings by Americans, they only serve water. But mm. when he gets invited mm. by the Chinese, there's buffet, mm -hmm. red carpet. Yeah, so and he always says really, yeah. that his mother is Chinese, and he makes uh, so much uh, aff affinities or affiliations yeah. with China. So that's all part and parcel of uh, the right. milieu and how he yes. grew up. Yeah, uh, I wanted to get into the field work that you did. You mentioned Davao already, but mm -hmm. I noticed you also did a lot of field work going to some of these projects that were struck under mm -hmm. Duterte. Talk us through some of them. I Particularly think, the yeah. drug rehabilitation center. Yeah, so they really the first, exist. Yes, they do the, exist. The but first one we went to mm -hmm. was the mega drug rehab center in a military camp in Nueva Ecija. And that was donated by a, a, a mainland no, Chinese uh, philanthropist. And it, remember, it was touted to be a 10,000 10, bed, bed capacity. But when we went there, 200, 200 beds. Mm. And then we talked to the people there. Some of the staff there, the social workers, have been there from the start. So they were telling us about how the launch was rushed and that they had to build stuff themselves because they were already in a rush to launch it. And then there were four phases. Three, two phases are no longer used. So it's just the two phases that are being used now. So all in all, it's just 200, 300. Was it a white elephant? Meaning were there like a... a Patients. Oh, there were, but not the ten thousand bed mm -hmm. capacity. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's a hype. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of hype. And so, um, sorry, was it this one or this is a different facility? That one is the other. Oh, um, that's the dam. That's the okay. Kaliwa, Kaliwa dam. dam. Okay. So that's the other end. 
Kaliwa Dam because, of course, with the Quezon part, there are mm -hmm. lots of issues now with the indigenous people. So they just started working on that Rizal part. Mm -hmm. So until now, it's, there's nothing. No, it's ongoing. Yeah, but it's, ongoing. it's not finished. Yeah. So basically, out of all the pledges yeah. of Duterte, we could really say that there's only one, oh, um, wow. one yeah. that's finished yeah. because that's the loan. That's mm. the Chico River oh, Irrigation wow. Project. That's yeah. in, we went there in Kalinga and Cagayan. Mm. But if we add the, pled, the grants or those that are come on, so to speak, we got three. Mm. Or counted uh, as two, actually, because mm. the government counts as the Rockwell Makati mm. Bridge yes. mm. and the yeah. Intramuros Binondo right. Bridge. It's counted as one by the government. Okay, uh, I have a friend who studied in China, and he said that it, it's, not, it's not actually because of uh, the affection or the unrequited love of China for Duterte. He says that the Chinese are very practical businessmen. Mm -hmm. And before investing or before putting out money, they want to see um, mm -hmm. how, how good of an environment we have here to do business. Right. So he said, it's not because of the souring relationship or the inability to fulfill promises of China by China, but because of how practical-minded the Chinese mm -hmm. are. Um, it, is, is, is your final judgment really that China has not been able to give the same level of affection as President yes. Duterte did? Yeah, because uh, remember in 2016 when he came back from Beijing, there was a long list of uh, promises and pledges, uh, at least a dozen. But out of those, we only got three loans. One was the finished irrigation project. The other one's the ongoing Kaliwadam. It's the third was the last one, just on the month, last month of Duterte's presidency, was the loan for the Davao Samal, Samal Bridge. Bridge. Right. So that's that, still... That one's happening, I heard. Yes. Is it true? But there, there, are, there are environmental on, issues. It stopped? Mm. No, but there are environmental issues. Yeah. Okay, so but, it's kind of alangani, basically. Yeah, so basically it's just like when it comes to the loans, it's just one thing that's done. The Chico River Irrigation Project. Okay. So we didn't look at the private because it's so difficult yeah. we look at state-owned mm, enterprises yes. okay. and one of these the big one was the third telco mm. yes the one that partnered with, with uh, Dennis yeah. Hui and is mm -hmm. now Dito yeah okay uh, wait, I, want, I also want to know with regard to all these projects they promised so much loan so yeah. much funding for all the infra projects now um, how did those not materialize um, do you know the root cause of why yeah. they fell through? I understand na napirmahan na yung mga deals na yun. Or at least that's how they made it seem to us, press right. releases, everything. Yeah. No, actually, iba yung process ng uh, borrowing from China. Uh, apart, uh, the, the loan application is uh, made with the China Exim Bank. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then it takes a year or two to process and to approve. And the pandemic made it worse. So that's one reason, mm -hmm. the pandemic. Okay. The second, also that after the pandemic, China's economy started to go down. Mm -hmm. And third is the viability of our projects. I think the biggest expectation was really the Mindanao Railways, right. the yes. three railways, yes. because right. Duterte promised that on his first State of the Nation address. Mm -hmm. and but that didn't. All throughout his... Right. Yeah. He kept yeah. reminding yeah. everyone that was about be it. the flagship. Yeah. 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 And right. remember that when Marcos had his first cabinet meeting, that was the report made that China did not uh, deliver. deliver. Yeah. Let's talk about politics for a sec. There's an interesting chapter in your book where you said that China also tried to woo the then ruling party, PDP Laban. Mm -hmm. What did you find out? Well, in, so we found out that during the pandemic, it was lockdown. It was the, at the peak of the lockdown, so September 2020. And then they were, China sent a, a big plane, a private plane that will ferry, I think, five members of PDP Laban in the middle of lockdown in the Philippines and China to meet with um, Communist, Party, Communist Party of China officials. And then, just before leaving, they were offered some secret vaccines. Oh, wow. But Are these the Sinopharm vaccines that he was injected with? Because that was never released for public yes. consumption. Only a select few um, yes. popular mainlanders, I will not yes. say the names, and our president <laughs> got that. And he yes. actually went on TV and said, I got this vaccine. And we're like, how? Because yeah. that's not available. Exactly. Yeah, but this was, so this was September, a few months before he actually got um, okay. inoculated with Sinopharm. So they were given 20,000 doses 
-hmm. but supposedly they returned it. Mm -hmm. But it just goes to show the lengths that China would go to. Because mm -hmm. at that time, we have to understand that China has been suffering um, international backlash from the initial handling mm -hmm. of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So Some uh, political analysts would say that this is Duterte's pragmatism, uh, forming closer ties with China mm -hmm. in order to be able to enforce or make China somehow follow the arbitral award in 2016. What would you have to say to that? Well, there are maybe he got two concessions from China. One, uh, he, the our military was able to construct on Pagasa, but that's really what we occupy. They're able to do a runway. They're able to do a uh, undisturbed by China, but that's really ours. That's really, but because uh, Duterte said, don't obstruct our construction. So mm. we got that. Number two, bumalik yung fishermen sa Scarborough. Again, mm. on and off. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they would be allowed to go inside where it's richer stocks mm -hmm. in the lagoon, mm -hmm. but sometimes they would be outside. So in their still under the mercy of the Chinese Coast Guard. Dinawin lang natin, Ms. Marites, no? kasi sa Scarborough right now, hindi sila nakakapasok sa lagoon at all. So during the sometimes time of Duterte, daw. depende kung sino yeah, nagbabantay. Yeah, they would tell me na yeah. depende sa mood ng Chinese mm -hmm. na nagbabantay. Mm -hmm. Sometimes what they do is um, paggabi, pagtulog, nakita nilang tinaas na yung smaller um, dingies. Mm. So, papasok sila sa loob. Pero pag gabi na, mag-uumaga na lalabas sila. So, yung sinasabi nga oh, okay. na you, si Duterte, na kung baga nangyari yun sa time niya, mm. eh, ngayon hindi na talaga pinapayagan hindi na sa talaga. loob. Mm. So, Pero hindi rin pala siya total concession. No, Meaning, hindi no. naman freely and safely yeah. labas-pass yung mga fishermen. It's like asking permission to do something mm. which are with, in, in, within, within right. parts EEZ. that are within our <laughs> EEZ. Yeah. I want to ask about Chapter 6. Chapter 6 of your book, uh, the way you structured it, is six parts, right? Six, six oh, yeah. different six parts. parts. Six. Uh, chapter 6, uh, failure to reign in government, Duterte, oh. unable to reign in government institutions um, mm. without having read your book yet. Mm -hmm. uh, what can you tell us about that chapter? Which government institutions, what is it all about? No, actually, what's most mm -hmm. interesting here is that there's, there was a pushback from the Department of Foreign Affairs, mm -hmm. from the Department of National Defense, so, from the Navy, hmm. from the Coast Guard eventually. Because mm -hmm. uh, Duterte, in the end, really failed to make the Philippines, Philippine institutions and the public rally behind his pro-China mm -hmm. people. So it's, what I really found interesting is that in the Foreign Affairs Department, of course, leadership counts. You know, when it was Teddy Boylock since time, he was more outspoken. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the leeway given to him by Duterte is that Leadership stand Duterte doesn't really care about details. He was just after his drug war, law and order. So Loxin was able to speak up and the staff were able to contribute ideas. Same in national defense. Do you think uh, Duterte realized at some point that uh, China wasn't returning his level of affection? And how are the relations now? Uh, because taking a look at the next two elections, the midterms and the 2028 mm -hmm. elections, still china would prove to be a very important mm. player before you answer that mm. i'm going to add <laughs> that his mom now has a school in fujian province oh yeah. uh, yes yes, yes. yes. so, so how after so her. that was, yeah. was yeah. Yeah. so her. just a small Whoa. background there so okay. there there are ties that bind in that school so one of the people close to michael yang it's Joseko shu ming yang mm -hmm. owns or like is now behind one of the reclamation projects in, in manila, manila. manila. Mm -hmm. so they donated um, one of the drug centers in Bukidnon. Mm -hmm. And right after they donated that, the Senate, um, Senator Zubiri and his brother, um, sponsored a bill that would grant them citizenship. Mm -hmm. Because here, of course, you couldn't own land mm -hmm. if you're Without not a citizen, this. right? Mm -hmm. So we can connect the dots. And then after that, Jose Ko, the tycoon who got the reclamation deal and the citizenship for his son, built a school in honor of Duterte's uh, mother in China, uh, China in, in his Fujian. alma mater. Okay, so how, are, how is that relationship now? F under Marcos? Did, did Duterte realize that it wasn't uh, going yeah. his way? Yeah, there was a point, in fact, vaccine. that he thanked the U.S. effusively <laughs> after we received the vaccines, right. uh, the MRI vaccines from uh, U.S. MRA. 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 You know what uh, he said that... Um, we share no. the same. Yeah, we share the same values, and he said he was going planning to visit the U.S. Mm. But what's interesting is that uh, he really uh, touted the help of China, which is true. They they 
they were the first really to give us um, Sinovac. Mm. <laughs> but they gave us, they donated so many doses, but in the end we bought five million, we bought millions we of bought doses more. from, we yes. bought more from them. Mm -hmm. And then it appears, it f later the U.S. gave us more than what the, when China did, gave. So later on, later di ba? on. Lumabas sobra ng dami and we didn't know, we couldn't find people to inoculate fast enough kasi mm -hmm. nagkaroon ng overflow. But in the beginning, kasi a lot of people were saying, teka, baka he's, uh, you know, currying China's favor in order to parang squeeze the United States. They were thinking well, it was a foreign policy strategy. Strategy. Like strategy. Like one you know, or yes. the other. But turns oh. out it wasn't. Or, or, or is it? How, in the how beginning, did you... we, we were giving him too much credit. <laughs> I think there's no strategy there. You know? It was just, he just really wanted the investments because the economy wasn't doing well, mm. especially, and then we went in the pandemic. But so, we would say because of that, somehow, the U.S. has given us more, more importance, importance. Mm. because mm -hmm. of that Duterte episode because in now our history. They know what it's like to be shut outside. <laughs> yeah. uh, sorry, we're running out of time, but we got to give you time to talk through your book. Where is it available? Where can people get them? You've run out of copies already in your first run. Congratulations. Yes. When is the second run going to be? <clears throat> so the book August. will be out on Ateneo de Manila Press's um, Lazada and Shopee stores and mm. also on their website. So it will be out, the August. new batch will be out on Monday, August 5th. Can they buy it uh, uh, from bookstores directly? Um, it will be. People pick up physical it copies? will soon be out on selected fully booked shops, but if you want to get the copy. Ms. Martas, can you hold up? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is what it looks like. <laughs> really great cover. Who did the illustration? Yeah. It's Diana David, oh, one nice. of the artists. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. He kind of looks like half Ginger King. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so is that on your yeah, it, it off, that's he looks like she's yeah. oh, Okay, you now can, I get it. Ooh, okay, uh -oh. I see the peels now yeah. on the side. I was wondering yeah. what the if white you rip stuff it was. Off, <laughs> it's it's Xi Jinping underneath. <laughs> and and for those smart. pala who want to read the ebook, there will be a version yeah, soon, out on soon. Amazon. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. Can't wait to get my hat one day. I will mental I'll, note uh, that. I reserve in the mail. And we want signed copies. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, Marites Vitog and Camille Elemia, authors of Unrequited Love, Duterte's China Embrace, second run on Monday. Don't miss it.